Hello everyone and welcome back to my master class. I am super excited about the topic that I'm going to discuss today. Thank you for those who join every single master class. I really appreciate you and thank you for those who are here for the first time. If you are listening on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe so that you can save this master class. If you are listening on Facebook, hi. And if you are listening on LinkedIn, what's up, LinkedIn crew? All right, those of you who do not know me, my name is Kathy Belletti. I am the founder of Motivate with KAT. So I create online training courses for admissions advisors and the leadership staff. I am called to serve in the admissions department and to inspire admissions advisors and leaders nationwide. That is my calling and it's definitely a passion for me. I'm also the host of EdUp Career Schools, The Scoop, which is a spinoff show of the EdUp Experience podcast. That gives me the opportunity to actually meet with everyone involved in the enrollment process because everyone has a voice, right? But seldom do people get the opportunity to really express where they think the pitfalls of higher education lie and how to fix this together one step at a time. All right. If you cannot stay for the entire training, make sure that you head on over to my YouTube channel at Motivate with KAT and subscribe so that you can watch it later on. Okay. So today's masterclass is for my advisors. Okay, because I know that your role is not easy, but today we're talking about how to address leads who call in for a program that you do not offer. And I know some of you are sitting there going, oh my gosh, thank the Lord. All right, so one, let me just say this. So I see your questions, okay? I see your comments. I'm not ignoring you. I am just very sensitive to your time because I know this industry is very busy and I know you're excited to get back and really talk to your students, okay? So I promise I will go back and answer all of your questions at the end. All right, so number one, how do you even address these type of situations or what some of you advisors may call setbacks, <laughs> okay? Quick note, most of your students, when they request information, they have no idea about that program program at all. Remember, a lot of your students request information because a friend or a family member told them that it was a great idea, right? That does not mean that our students take the initiative and research these programs before they call your school to find out if this is something that really suits their personality. So I need you to understand that. Here's the second thing. If you spend too much time in the beginning of your call discussing a program, you're going to waste a lot of time. Okay, why is that? Because remember, going back to my first point, most of your students, they don't really know much about the program that they entered on that lead form. So if you don't take the time to get to know your prospective students and you spend all of this time going back and forth about a program, what do you think is going to happen? You're gonna hear, what else you got? And then you start going through another program, you go through all of the details, and then you hear, that's all you guys have? You have anything else? And then eventually you're gonna hear, all right, can you guys just send me an email on all of your programs? I'll look through it and then I get back to you. All right, you're wasting a lot of time. Because if the student doesn't even know about the program that they called in for and you spend all of this time going back and forth, you're spending time talking about a program that does not mesh with their personality. OK, so this is why you create that friction where they're like, OK, you got anything else? You got anything else? And what happens? Sometimes you end up on this cycle on the phone explaining 15 programs that your school has to offer just to hear. I'll do some more research and call you guys back. Okay, and I know that can be very frustrating, all right? But I'm going to tell you how to handle those type of calls. Because guess what? A lot of those leads can be saved. And sometimes you may tell a student, okay, so here's some information. If you find out that you're interested in anything or any one of these programs, just give me a call back. And guess what? You may never hear from that student again. So this is what you do. The first thing, when you get a student on the phone, you are not spending any of that time talking about a program at all. Okay, it doesn't matter. I don't care what happens on the lead form. 
when you get a student on the phone, you are not concentrating on a program at all. You are getting to know that person. You have to get to know the specifics, okay? What are you interested in? One, let's start with the field, okay? Where do you see yourself? And of course, that depends on the type of programs that your school offers, okay? Let's take healthcare for an example. Okay, so you're interested in healthcare. All right, where can you see yourself working? In a big hospital, in a small doctor's office, in a clinic, get that answer out of them first, right? But you also need to find out what type of skills do they want to learn? What do you see yourself doing? And sometimes you may have to paint the picture because if you're working in admissions for years, sometimes you get to know some of these programs like the back of your hand. So you find yourself throwing out all different types of terminology and your students on the phone going, what does that even mean, <laughs> right? So if you're trying to paint a picture of a medical assistant, for instance, right, or the administrative part of a medical assistant, paint a picture of a doctor's office. When you walk into a doctor's office, what do you see? Create a dialogue so that the students begin to talk to you and they start to paint their own picture. And then you ask them, is that what you can see yourself doing? Now you're connecting the dots, right? So I need you guys to spend time asking them questions about where they see themselves, what type of personality, what kind of personality do they have? Would they rather work alone? Would they rather work in a doctor's office where they have a bunch of coworkers around them? Because some people don't want to work around anyone. They want to work independent. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, right? But you have to find out who that person is. Number two, if they're calling in for a program, that you do not offer, what you want to ask them is number one, why are you interested in that program? Okay? What got you interested in the first place, right? And then after that, ask them, what do they know? Now, here's the key. When you ask that question, you'll find out in a lot of cases, they don't know, <laughs> right? Because it goes back to my original point. They're calling in because somebody told them it was a good idea. You know what? You should do medical building and coding. You don't like to be around people. I think that's going to be the best for you. And they fill out the lead form. They're like, okay, well, you know, let me find out about medical billing and coding, right? Ask them, why are you interested in that program? And what do you know? You'll find out that some students go, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't really know much about that program at all. Now you have an open door, okay? The third step is to tell them about the program. What do you think that means? That means that you now have to get on Google and do some research. And I'm not saying to learn 15, 20 different programs. What it is, is every school has students who call in for at least two to three programs every single day that you don't offer. And it's the same three programs all the time. Okay, everyone is not calling your school for random programs. OK, you may have a list of programs that your school offers, but based on what Google search is picking up, you will have people who call in and it's either two, three or four programs at max that students keep requesting over and over. And I know as an advisor, you're like, I don't understand what's going on with marketing. You know, why are these people calling for this program? It really doesn't matter if it's three or four programs that you're hearing all the time. Get on Google, do the research so that you can now educate them on those programs. If you really want to be able to help these students, you have to help them outside of your school, too. So it's not just about talking about your program. Sometimes you may have to go the extra mile and say, you know what? I keep getting five people who always want cosmetology and we do not offer that program. So let me research cosmetology so that when you get that and you ask those two questions, one, why? Two, what do you know? Now you can enlighten them and say, enlighten them and say, you know what, here's what cosmetology is. Is that what you thought that program was about? In a lot of cases, you find that students go, oh. Yeah, I, I didn't know that's what that was at all. Yeah, I'm not interested in that, okay? Two things can happen. A student can say to you, no, that does not suit my personality at all. Or they may say, yep, that's right up my alley, <laughs> okay? One or the other has to happen. But either way, despite what happens, your next step should be, well, have you considered, okay? 
It's not baiting and switching. It's asking a question. If someone from your um from your lead list calls in and they're interested in EMT, and you go through all of the details of what it takes to be an EMT, right? A first responder. Some students may go, yep, that's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, well, not a problem at all. It's an excellent field to get into. Never downplay any program just because your school does not offer it. Let them know that it's a great career choice, but then go on and say, well, have you considered? Because a lot of students may say, yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And then if you ask another question, have you considered? They may say, you know what? I've actually always thought about that, but I really never knew how to get into that field. Boom, you have an open door, right? And in the other situation, if a student goes, what? Okay, that is not what I thought that was going to be. Whew, I dodged the bullet, right? The same exact sentence. Have you considered? You'll find that some students go, oh, wait a minute. That sounds more up my alley. Okay? So do not focus on the program because when students are misplaced, guess what? It plays a huge role in retention. So many times you may have students enrolled in the program <clears throat> and then you find that all of a sudden they're ghosting you, right? There's a person that you spoke to and you're thinking to yourself, oh, okay, I got this in the bag. This person is excited. Okay, they can't wait to get started. And then all of a sudden they're gone. All of a sudden they're gone and your excited enrollment is now ghosting you. They're not answering the phone. They're not responding to your emails. They're not responding to your text messages. What do you think happened in that case? You didn't get the time. You didn't take the time to get to know them. You focused on the program and on the phone, they were like, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds really good. They enrolled in your program and guess what? After they leave your school or after they hang up the line, they continue to do research. And as they continue to do research, they start reading more about what does not suit their personality. And now they're saying, whoo, thank God I did not go that far in the process because this is not something that I want to do at all. They're gone. Or you may have students who actually go through the entire process, right? They start class and guess what? Week two, they're gone. Because once again, the program did not suit their personality. So it's not what they thought it was gonna be. And here's a side note. Make sure that you tell your students, number one, that you know in the beginning of their program, they're not going to get right into their major classes. Everyone knows that, whether you're talking about a traditional school or a for-profit institution, right? You're not gonna be jumping right into your major classes in the beginning. So let your students know that because sometimes your students are coming into a program thinking, yes, I get to perform phlebotomy my very first week. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're nowhere near phlebotomy <laughs> your first two weeks. So let them know that. But what's happening is sometimes when you get to week two, three, or four, they start to realize, okay, they're looking at their addendums, they're looking at their courses, and they're saying, mm, this, is, this is not what I can envision myself doing every single day. And then they drop. OK, because they were never aligned. So here's what you do when you're talking to students in the beginning of the call. You're asking questions about them. OK, what is going on in your life? What was going on in your past? OK, that brought you to this point. What is your current situation? Right. So you're asking them about their job. Right. You're asking them what they like, what they dislike about their current situation. You're asking them about your schedule in some cases, right? You're asking them about how long have you been thinking of pursuing a career in this industry? That question is very important. And I know some advisors breeze that over, but it's very important because if someone tells you, you know, I've been thinking about this for six years. Hold on for a second. Six years, that's a long time to just be thinking about something. There's a story behind that, right? And here's what I want you advisors to understand. Everyone has a story and your job is to find out what that story is. I say this all the time. No one wakes up every morning and goes, you know what? I'm going to invest $35,000 today. I wonder which school I'm going to choose. No one does that. There's something going on in someone's life that's causing them to say, you know what? I need to do something better or I'm ready for the next step. You have to find out what that is. And the reason why you have to find out what that is, is because that is their reason that's causing them to take action. 
So do not breeze over that question when someone says, uh, I've been thinking about this for eight years. Okay. And then go on to the next question. No, sometimes you have to slow down in the beginning of your conversations because some of their responses warrant you to stop. Okay. It calls for you to stop and elaborate on that topic. I know some of you are just so eager to get to the ending of your conversation because you need to set the appointment. Or if you're an online school, you're eager to get to the end of the conversation because you need an enrollment. But guess what? You have to think this is time that you're invested too. So do you want to get through the process just to get to an enrollment, to be chasing people all the way up to the class start? Or do you want to take the time to really find out if this is a program that's going to meet their need so that you have a graduate? That's what this is about, okay? So when you ask those type of questions, you begin to unfold, okay, this is what this person needs. And in some cases, it may be to send them someplace else. So that's one, that's very, that's one thing that's very important, right? But besides that, now you start asking them about their personality. Where can you see yourself? When you wake up every morning and you're traveling to work, what does that look like? You know, what would you be excited to do every single day and stop accepting these surface level answers like I want to help people? Okay, you want to help people. You know, there's thousands of different industries where you get to do just that. But you have to dig deeper. You want to help people in what sense? Okay, get those answers out of your students. And the most important thing that you can ask your student is why now? What is driving you to say, you know what, at this point in my life, I need to do something different. You need to hang on to that answer. Find the pain in their situation. And I know this is controversy because a lot of people don't like to focus on pain points. But guess what? Pain is what drives people to take action because they're tired of their situation. They're tired of being looked over. They're tired of not being able to provide. You have to get that out of them because guess what? When your students stop responding, to your calls and they disappear, those false beliefs are coming back, right? They're getting in their head. They're getting in the way of their success again. If you took really good notes, you should be able to go back to your dialogue and say, you know what? Wait a minute. Kat told me that she needed this because get on the phone and leave that message. You need to get used to hitting your students right here because this is what's driving them to say, I need to do something different with my life, okay? So my advisors, this whole game is not about the enrollment. It's about the student. Enrollment's canceled, right? But when it comes to really understanding your students and really getting from them what they need to be successful, then you'll be able to pair the program that meets their need. And that's how you're going to get more students to stick. All right. When it comes to the program, you're not talking about the program until you get to that section. In the beginning, it's all about your student. When you get to the program, then you make a recommendation. And it's very simple. If you're really taking good notes, you can now say, all right, so I know you're eager to learn about the program. Based on what you told me, in the beginning of this call or based on what you told me in the beginning of this interview and then name three items that they told you that they can see themselves doing based on those items i think this program and you give them the name of the program is going to be the best fit for you and here's why and then you go into the program description Okay, so remember, we're not talking about a program in the beginning. In the beginning, all you're doing is building rapport, building trust, getting to know your students, right? Getting them to dig deeper and find out, okay, well, why do I want to do this? What is going on in my life right now? Because I'm already working, okay? Are you satisfied with what you're doing? You know, are you making what you want to make? Is this fulfilling you every single day? Get those answers out of them. Get to know the student, build value within your calls, and then make a recommendation. Because the more that you're able to pair the perfect program with who your student is, the more students you're gonna get to the first day of class and beyond, and you'll be able to watch those students walk across that stage on graduation day. All right, so don't forget that. I don't want you guys to continue to freak out when you finally get somebody to answer the phone, and you're like, yes! And then all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, um, so uh, do you have paramedics? And it's like, there we go. 
another paramedic. I don't know where they're getting this from, but we don't offer that program. Now you'll be able to say, all right, time to roll up my sleeves. I heard this before and walk them through that call. That might be your best enrollment for the day, right? Because you were actually able to save a student from investing in a program that they would have probably dropped out of because it wasn't the best fit for them in the first place, okay? That's what this is all about. So make sure that you follow those steps, all right? I hope you guys took a lot of notes today because I know that this is something that you deal with every single day and I know that it can be frustrating. Trust me, I started off as an advisor, okay? Trust me, my leaders out there, I was a regional, I was a DOA. I know how it is when your babies, when your advisors are frustrated because you want them to win also. Follow these steps and I guarantee you, you're going to be able to help more students really change their lives, okay? All right, so I want you guys to make sure that you head on over to my YouTube channel at Motivate with KAT and subscribe. You'll be able to find my master classes there. If you follow my podcast and you like video, you'll be able to see all of my past episodes on YouTube. And most importantly, for my advisors, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you will be able to see tons of one minute videos that you can watch different tips on how to inspire students, what they need, where you can get on the phone and go, oh my gosh, I can use that tip right now. Okay, so make sure that you head on over to YouTube at Motivate with KAT and subscribe so that you get notified every single time a new video is uploaded and every single time a new podcast episode <clears throat> is uploaded as well. All right. Tonight I will be on Twitter Spaces. Okay. I am on Twitter Spaces every other Thursday at 5 p.m. All right. And it's called 10 Minutes with K because that is just 10 minutes for us to talk about higher education, all things higher ed, what we love and what we despise. Okay. Because let's get real. Not everything about higher education is peachy, especially nowadays. All right. So that gives you an outlet to come on over, have a conversation and see how we can fix some things. All right. So that's Twitter Spaces at Kathy Belletti. All right. That's every other Thursday at five. And for my advisors, remember every other Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, I am live on Instagram and we're talking about all things admissions. I'm giving you guys all different types of tips, how to deal with students, how to manage expectations, sticks, your recap, everything admissions. So do not forget to join me every other Thursday on Instagram, Motivate with Cat one all right? And that's 9.30 a.m. Eastern. All right, lastly, for my executives, for my leaders, if you are looking for a training program that can complement what your director of admissions are already doing, I have a full training program called Next Level Admissions, okay? Every single advisor on your team gains one year unlimited access to this course, there's a lot of fun videos, there's presentations, there's quizzes, all right? But it takes them through the entire process. And this can be for a brand new advisor and our seasoned advisors out there. We're going through customer service, how to play nice in the sandbox with financial aid. All right, so if you are interested in a demo, head on over to lessons.motivatewithkat.com so that we can set up a demo. Okay. Apart from that, it was amazing guiding you guys today. And please let me know if you have any questions so I can go back and answer them for you. Until then, thanks for joining. I will see you in a couple weeks. Bye.